thirsty. Ah. Water. Oh god, water. Please. God, could I get any thirstier? Awakener of a thousand furries, Awakener of me, and all around a Wooga icon. And you know, I sensed that there were quite a few questions our community had when she was first unveiled. Is she meant to be a wolf or a dragon? Why weren't the wolf heads named after the runner ups from the naming contest? Why doesn't she have an all fours run in her ultimate state? Will she sit on my face? Sadly, I am unqualified to help answer any of those. Except that third one. Come on, D! She can't even use a weapon in this state! There's no reason why she shouldn't have a unique run! Are you kidding me?! So, Varuna feels as if she was meant to be a frame that combines all of her kit into one singular style of play. But I don't think D.E. fully succeeded here. Like, okay, one of her powers is responsible for fulfilling some conditional effects that the rest of her kit asks for, but that one power is so effective on its own that I hardly bother to utilize said conditionals. In fact, I think their efforts have resulted in a frame who has one central dominant power focus, but also has another different playstyle that you could use if you wanted, albeit not as strong. It reminds me of Sevagoth a bit, actually. Except in his case, his alternate playstyle seemed intended and are way more balanced, rather than one just being vastly more dominant over the other. Now, yes, you can build any frame for any ability, but let's be real with ourselves. No one is building Mesa around ballistic battering a corpus in their stocks. And if you are, you're probably the kind of person who swears by eating twigs dipped in glitter glue. Which is why I always welcome Mommy when, I mean moments, when D makes frames like this. Even if this time it seems like it may have been an accident. I see her being built in one of three ways. Firstly, as a melee-focused powerhouse, second, as a status-spreading nuker, or third, as a hybrid of both of these styles, using every power in her kit and focusing on both melee and status-spreading, which I believe was DE's intention. But uh, if that is the case, only problem there, DE. I feel like Varuna has a clearly dominant focus on that second playstyle that I mentioned, and we'll get into that later. Regardless of what you go for though, she's pretty clearly designed to deal deeps. And she deals deeps good. So let's first very quickly go over her passive. Or passives. Because yes, DE gave her four, most of which aren't particularly unique, but hey, that just makes my job easier. Her first passive increases parkour velocity by 55%, and there's not much to say about this one. It's probably the weakest of her passives unless you like getting stuck on geometry. The second one grants immunity to status effects, and this one's my personal favorite one because while Varuna is a damage-dealing machine, she's surprisingly quite squishy. Like, she has ways to heal, but nothing in her kit gives her any sort of edge against actually taking in damage. So relying on things like adaptation is key, at least for me. And being able to completely be immune to things like heat, slash, and toxin procs makes a big difference in survivability. So this is the one that I keep on most of the time. Her third one gives her heavy melee attacks 100% efficiency. That is to say, all heavy attacks consume much less combo count than before. And this is a great passive if you plan on running her as a melee frame, but I personally don't, so I don't use this one much either. And her last one is basically a free extra life. If she dies, she becomes invulnerable for a few seconds and gets all of her health and shields back. And then the passive goes into a one minute cooldown. So this is probably her second best passive, but it has one crucial flaw. Swapping off of the passive automatically enters the cooldown. So once you've selected this as your passive, you're punished if you ever try to switch off. And I just don't like that. I think I'd prefer to stay in her second passive, since that one already gives you a pretty massive boost to her survivability when combined with the appropriate mods. And unless you're just doing a really long endless mission, you're not likely to run out of standard revives anyways. That said, this is an excellent passive for things like arbitrations, since in that game mode you have no normal revives whatsoever, so in cases like that, I basically just always leave this one on. But anywhere else, I personally just run her status immunity passive. Power time. 
Shroud of Dylan is a- sorry, Shroud of Dinar is a perfect example of why we can never fully trust power descriptions because D has chronic figure it out yourself Lamal disorder. So its basic effects are that it grants Faruna invisibility for a few seconds and breaks once she attacks. If her attack hits a target before the shroud breaks, she gets a crit damage multiplier, a 100% status chance increase to her melee attacks, and they all get a guaranteed chance to deal a slash proc for a few seconds. And for a short period after breaking invis, any kill she gets will increase the duration of the buff, though she can only do this once. So, shrimple enough, right? Well, fucko make assumption, fucko get surprises. Because, during my testing, I came across a few... Uh, caveats with Shroud. Said caveats mainly residing in melee weapons that support ranged attacks. So, some of these ranged attacks can proc the buff and even get the damage bonus, but these same attacks don't benefit from the guaranteed slash proc half of the buff. You can see that here with a gunblade, for instance. Notice how even though the damage of my crits has increased, that there's no slash procs being dealt. Now, you might say, oh, well, technically those are bullets and not a melee attack, so it shouldn't get that buff. But three things there, Hotshot. First, if it can't benefit from the status or slash buff because it, quote, doesn't count as a melee strike, why would it be able to proc it when the proc condition says on melee strike? Second, why would the shots get one half of the buff but not the other? And third, that doesn't explain why other melee weapons with ranged options also don't get the slash buff. Because yes, even things like a tossed glaive won't proc the slashes, even though the toss can proc the buff. Same thing applies to things like the Costasis Acid Wave and the Agendasis Discs. This makes Shroud of Dinar really annoying to work with, especially if it doesn't play nicely with your melee weapon of choice. But when it does work, a Dinar opens up your first focus of play, a melee oriented style. The crit damage, status chance, and guaranteed slash procs are nothing to scoff at and can turn her into a melee brute if you want to go down that route. And her third power also encourages this melee playstyle for reasons that you'll see later. It's not her most effective style of play, but if you just want to hit things with a stick and see big numbers, you can legitimately legitimately build her for the high duration, low range, and high strength, and then just bludgeon a heavy gunner's skull in. She's further encouraged to do this with her third passive, making heavy attacks barely even drain your combo multiplier. So with proper usage of Shroud, yeah, she can shit out melee deeps. But that is peanuts compared to her other style of play. Fangs of Rake, sorry, Fangs of... Raksh? What? is what happens when you take Saren and Lavos and have them fuck. And a slot machine is involved somehow too. Activating it causes Varuna to launch forward towards a mob and inflict it with the five status effects chosen at random, each one having 10 stats each. If the target dies while under the effects of rock, shh, I'm just gonna call that, they will basically explode and spread their statuses to enemies nearby. And this can do so so much fucking damage. In fact, I I think it was more than what DE was expecting. Because it looks like DE was intending Varuna's kit to combine into Fangs of Rock with it serving as the core to her kit. Like even her four has a condition that is tailor-made to be met by this power. But uh, I gotta be honest, you can do a hell of a lot of work with just Rock alone. To the point where I honestly feel like you should just pump most of your energy into Rock instead instead of trying to combine it and her first and fourth powers together. Listen to me. Being essentially a Saren spinoff is going to be considered popular for a reason. I mean, look at this shit. Now, yes, there is some RNG involved in this power's effectiveness. Sometimes your five procs might end up being corrosive, viral, slash fire and toxin, and everything in a 17 meter radius will just immediately melt. And other times you might proc magnetic, impact, puncture, radiation, and frost, and they'll just kind of sit there and have a bit of an episode, but otherwise not take much damage. But here's the thing, there's nothing stopping you from just casting rocks again. So boo hoo! Doesn't really matter if your RNG is bad now, does it? But 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 there's one thing, one thing that incentivizes you to focus almost entirely on this ability. You wanna know what makes this power really delicious? No line of sight check. 
God, you love to see it. And, I mean, if you are dedicated to running her as a melee frame, then you'll be pleased to know that Fangs of Rocks makes for excellent condition overload material. But the thing is, enemies are going to be dying more to the statuses alone anyway. And this is why I think her one may not be all that worth it unless you really just like melee. Now, while the power is pretty simple to understand, that there is one thing that isn't explicitly told to you. Only the enemy that is hit by rocks directly will spread statuses on death. Those who inherit the statuses just die normally. But anyways, in short, this is probably what you will be focusing on the most when playing Varuna. Sure, you could try playing around her one, but there's just no contest, guys. And that's made even more evident with her third power. Like her? Or is it like it? Like it sounds better. Like it's hunt, aka desecrate but with more steps, is pretty simple. It's a buff where, while active, mobs will drop health orbs on melee kill and energy orbs on headshot kills. And whenever an enemy with five or more status procs die, the duration of the buff increases. Gee, I wonder where you can get five procs from. Like it's hunt just kinda further reinforces the idea that Fangs of Rocks is the king of her kids. True, it does encourage melee kills by dropping health orbs, but I mean you get energy orbs on headshots, which in my opinion is just a tiny bit more valuable. Not only that, but if you want the buff to last any decent amount of time, you need to kill enemies with multiple status effects. So it really encourages you to smack enemies with rocks and finish off any stragglers with headshots to further fund the energy cost of both of the powers, rather than just using it to get health orbs with melee kills. Of course, there's nothing stopping you from just using both effects of the buff. And this power actually makes Varuna possibly the best user of the Equilibrium mod, providing her near limitless amounts of health and energy regardless of which ones you spawn. Though, I do have one complaint. D, why do you hate skill? Okay, so let's say you have a melee equipped and land a headshot with that melee weapon. So either you did a jumping attack with a sword or were using a gunblade, whatever. So you would expect that you'd get both a health orb as well as an energy orb, right? Well... You hear that sound? That is D.E. currently screwing your concept of fun over a table in the next room over. Because, yep, in these scenarios, the game only drops a health orb instead of giving you both. Which is actually the worst of the two options that it could choose from. So not only does D.E. not reward you for your precise shot, but they actually punish you by not giving you the energy orb that you would have gotten had that headshot been with an actual gun. But okay, in all honesty, this isn't a big deal. But the reason that I'm complaining is because I know this was coded into the power. I know that someone on the dev team made the conscious decision to do this. And that just makes me mad for some reason. God, Canadians make my blood boil. Mm. Lastly, we have Ulfron's Descent. And I'm going to be real with you. This power is the Vegeta of the kit. It's supposed to be powerful, but ends up just being short and disappointing. On activation, Varuna goes into an all four stance, still mad about the animation thing by the way, and in this state she can lunge towards a maximum of five enemies. The leap causes damage, delivers a guaranteed slash proc, deals a pulse of damage to enemies within an AoE, does more damage if the target has a status effect, and any lethal pounce doubles the damage of the remaining pounces. That's a lot of modifiers and conditionals. And yet the power still feels just underwhelming. So here's the problem. By the time you can get her four to deal its crazy damage, things will have already been killed by your other sources. It's always a risky thing to make a power that focuses mainly on single target damage, and this is a prime example why. Most enemies that aren't a heavy unit are going to die in one hit to most weapons you have anyways. And yes, while the pounce does deliver a pulse of damage around the target, here's the issue. The pulse doesn't seem to get any of the scaling the pounce itself has. The extra bonus damage on lethal pounce multiplier? Nope, only the main pounce gets that. The guaranteed slash proc? Pulse doesn't get that either. The, the, the extra damage from hitting a mob with a status proc? No. So it seems like the main purpose of her four was to spread the status of her two. But if that's the case, her weapons will do that faster and for no energy cost. And I mean, hell, this pounce doesn't even count as a melee strike, so it can't even get bonuses from her one. Though this does mean that as a funny side effect, using her four doesn't break shroud. So 
I guess that's something? So this has left her four in a really awkward spot, like a kid trying to find out what lunch table he belongs in. The damage it deals is largely conditional focused, and even when those conditions are met, it's only really applied to one single target. So yeah, uh, kind of an unfortunate ultimate for an otherwise really powerful frame. Varuna is a deeps queen, dealing her damage in a way that I wasn't really expecting. Indeed, I must admit, I wasn't predicting that a werewolf frame would be more of an alchemist than our actual alchemist. But I'm not complaining. I actually like building more around status effects than crits, personally. I don't know, I just find it more enjoyable to see all the funny icons above a target's head, wondering how it must feel to be frozen, on fire, bleeding, vomiting, and having a massive dent in your head all at once. While I think there were some goals that DE didn't quite reach with her design, she luckily ended up being powerful regardless. And if that's a happy accident, then hey, so be it. Now, I need to excuse myself and, uh, clear some, um, search history.